quarter of the meeting of the Texas State University System Board of Regents is now reconvened in open session. We have a quorum present, and for the record, the date is November 18th, 2016, and the time is 10.03 a.m. Good morning, everybody. Thanks, Dr. Hoyt, for last night. Hey, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful dinner. dinner. Oh, the building is fabulous. It's incredible. I wish I was back in college, man. This is, these facilities are phenomenal, what, what you've done. And uh, that presentation by that little troop was awesome. You know, it's hard to move me to tears, but boy, that was, uh, that was something special. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, and I'm glad everybody being, um, had fun at Neverland last night. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, good luck this weekend, too. Oh, thank you. So the next order of business is the uh, <clears throat> Great Student Advisory Board Report. I'd like to thank all the Student Advisory Board members for being here today. Uh, we really enjoyed breakfast with you all this morning. Uh, love talking to you guys, Marcus, all of y'all. Uh, great futures ahead for, uh, for you guys and for your families. Uh, we appreciate the time we had to visit with you. I'd like not to uh, invite each of the presidents to introduce their student uh, advisory board members. Ken, you want to start? Is this on? Dan, how do I turn it on? I think you're just talking to it. Huh? I think you're just talking to it. Am I on? You're always on. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Chairman Garza. <laughs> I think uh, it's a pleasure to have with us today Aaron Laverne is president of our SGA is a senior mechanical engineering major out of Houston Texas and as you just mentioned we also have with us Marcus Anderson is vice president with the SGA and is a senior business management major also out of Houston Texas thank you good morning I am pleased to introduce uh, our two students our SGA President Justine Pina Russell. She is from Port Natchez and is a AAS, excuse me, an AA uh, degree, uh, will be an AA degree recipient with a gra expected graduation date of May 2017. Also, mm -hmm. we have Anna Carmier, who is from Port uh, Arthur or Port Natchez. And she is a major in instrumentation and an avid fisherman and deer hunter. All right, um, we have two SGA members here today. Um, Jacqueline Bolden is our SGA president. Um, Jackie is a senior major in political science. She's from Corpus Christi and we were visiting over breakfast and she's studying right now for her, her LSATs um, that she's gonna take. So looking forward to law school. And she's also the, um, the um, chair of SAB right now. And then our vice president is Brianna Augustus, and she is a junior majoring in biology, um, wanting to get a master's in pathology before she goes to medical school to be a medical examiner. Um, and she's looking at graduating, one's graduating May um, 17, and what, May 18 is Brianna. So thank you. Good morning. It's my pleasure to introduce four outstanding students representing Sol Ross. First, our student leaders of the Sol Ross State University Rio Grande College uh, campuses. Our president, uh, Pedro Navarro. He's a senior majoring in mathematics and is from Uvalde. His goal is to return to the community as at the same amount that the community has given to me and to be a motivating, inspiring, and setting an example. So we're Proud of Pedro. Vice President at RGC, Jennifer Montoya. Jennifer's from Eagle Pass, is a senior as well. Her major is interdisciplinary studies, and her desire is to become a teacher, become the best teacher possible, and impact my community. Now, at Solaral State University Alpine, our student body president is Danielle Lucero. She's a graduate student currently in the MBA program at Sol Ross, having received last year her bachelor's degree in animal science. Her desire is to become a veterinarian and run her own large and small animal vet clinic in West Texas. She hails from Odessa. And our vice president, uh, Vince Apodaca, is from El Paso. Vince is a junior business administration major with a concentration in accounting. 
His desire is to go on and get his master's degree in accounting and after graduation and then earn his CPA. So thank you very much. Good morning. I'm pleased to introduce two students from Lamar State College, Port Arthur. This morning we have with us Jessica Jones. Jessica is our SGA president. She is from Vider, Texas, and her major is Medical Office Administration. Also with us this morning is Mr. Bradley Fant. Bradley is the SGA vice president. He hails from Port Arthur, Texas, and he is a business administration major and plans to transfer to Lamar University to complete his degree. From Lamar State College Orange, I'm pleased to uh, introduce two of our student leaders, our SGA president, uh, Zedric Cesar. Zedric's uh, working on a degree, uh, AA degree in liberal arts and a certificate in game design. And Rebecca Dumasnell, our SGA vice president, who uh, is going to graduate this May with a uh, degree in process technology. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to introduce um, our one student who is here. Andrew Homan is the president of student government at Texas State University. Uh, he is a business economics major from Woodlands, Texas, and uh, he aspires to go to law school after he graduates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I get uh, the student advisory board president will now deliver their uh, board report to the regents. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Chancellor McCall, Mr. Chair, fellow members of the Board of Regents, the Student Advisory Board would first like to thank San Houston State University, my university, uh, for all its hospitality uh, while we've been here over the past two days. Uh, we would also like to thank Chancellor McCall for your feedback from our last report. Uh, really benefited uh, the board at all. Um, today we have several two board members who would like to speak before the board about two of the items we have outlined in our report. Uh, the mandatory fee, wa fee waivers along with the structure of the student advisory board. I would like to call Andrew Homan, the student body president from Texas State University and Brown Augustus, the vice president from Sam Houston State University to the front to deliver the report. Mandatory fee waivers. In reviewing the November board book, the Student Advisory Board voted not to support the board's decision to waive certain auxiliary fees for online students. The Student Advisory Board represents over 84,000 students who were not involved in the decision-making process. Only one student out of over 84,000 students raised any concern about paying the recreational sports fee, the student center fee, and the medical fee. The voice of one student should not dictate the policy of an entire system, and today we would like to discuss some reasons why. Good morning. Good morning. As she said, I am Brianna Augustus, the Vice President at Sam Houston State University. Um, mandatory fee waivers. Well, we discovered this after seeing the board book, and we saw that it was there for you guys to vote on and no discussion was being made. We um, just really just raised concern, not for you guys not to have done this, but maybe for some discussion to be had. Uh, after speaking with the VPs yesterday, they disclosed to us that there are student hearings for these fees for students to go to. However, after our students on the student advisory board did their research, we didn't have these meetings for this fee. We're not sure who is supposed to tell us where these are or if they're supposed to happen, but we didn't get any word about this and this affects us greatly. In the board book as well, for Sol Ross, both campuses, we are reinstating the fee for the computer access fee for the exact same reason that we are adding a waiver at Sam Houston. We're just confused about that because we're using the same reason to do the two opposite things. And we're confused because um, the ta adding this waiver is going to hurt the university. Sam Houston alone is going to, use al is going to lose almost a million dollars just because we're taking this waiver away. And these are not even 
fees that our graduates, that our strictly online students complain about. They complain about other fees and we weren't even in the discussion to even, for y'all to know what the students actually wanted to be waived. Um, at other universities, Seoul Ross will be losing almost $200,000 a year for these waivers to be put in. Texas State will lose a million dollars for these waivers to be put in. Lamar will lose almost $2 million for these waivers to put it, be put in. And Sam is losing almost a million dollars. And those are just the universities that have the highest attendance for online students. Um, we're just really concerned that we weren't this, we're the student advisory board and you didn't ask the students for advice on this before it happened. Um, I know that you guys voted on it already, but we would just like to, you know, put that to your attention that it didn't, it's, it's not a great idea and you didn't discuss with us anything or ask us anything and it's not beneficial to any of the institutions. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, uh, I'm Andrew Homan. I serve as the student body president for Tech State University. Um, this, this, throughout this uh, week, the student advisory board essentially discussed how we can be more effective representing the students from our specific universities and within the system. And we, we believe we've come up with a couple ways that we think um, would help us better represent the students. Um, essentially, we would like, uh, we believe it's our duty to accurately represent the will of the 84,000 students within the system and we would like to serve as the advising board for the regents. Uh, we know that's essentially what we're called upon to do um, based on what our description is on the website. We feel as if um, it would be more beneficial for the student advisory board to have a little bit more time, a little bit more access to maybe some of the, the things that were going on such as the uh, first draft of the board book that way we can better advise and ask the students on our campus what they believe is the most effective way for things to happen um, we would like for the chair of the student advisory board to have voice in all decisions involving uh, fees waivers and policy changes uh, things that will directly affect the students on our campus uh, we also believe that an important aspect of what uh, makes the representation of students so great is if a legislative priority could be put on having a student regent be recognized with uh, motion power, uh, accounting for quorum, as well as having votes within, within the discussions. Um, for a system of close to 84,000 students to not be able to, to have a vote or to be able to make motions, we believe is a disservice to serving our students and we believe that is a very important legislative priority. Thank you. So that kind of outlines two of the, what's really discussed thoroughly in the report. Um, mandatory fees, we talk about the counseling services and how that's something that if you look at recent events is needed across the board. Uh, we have students who commute from Houston to Huntsville and they're out, beyond outside the 60 mile radius and they're completely online students but they still participate in organizations, student services. Um, they graduate here at Sam Houston, um, we can speak that they do graduate in the Johnson Coliseum, and that's a resource if you take rec rec the recreational sports fee away that they're no longer required to pay. Um, health services, um, I, we as a board, uh, if we were included in the conversation, would have proposed something to the extent of opting out of, of various fees, or in-state, out-of-state. Uh, we just, we, there are students at this currently right now that live in residence halls who are take completely online courses. Um, we just have several concerns and they're outlined in, in the report. $275 is what's estimated for Sam Houston State University alone. That's not enough of, of um, that's not enough of a an, of an financial impact to cause a student to choose whether or not they're, they're gonna to go to San Francisco State University. We also had questions about fees that weren't included that are non-mandatory fees and why those also weren't considered for, uh, considered as to be waived. Um, and additionally, we, were, we had concerns as to the fees that will be um, waived what will, uh, how will universities compensate for what's being lost? Because um, the amount of money, $1 million, and it's specifically for student services, is a lot of money. And we're already trying to push legislation for more TRBs on our campuses, um, more funding for our universities, public funding for public institutions. So um, that's outlined in our report. Um, as far as the Student Advisory Board, um, 
We understand the goal is to represent the students and we just would like a stronger voice at the table. Um, and the last item we have is veteran resource centers. Um, the Student Advisory Board is in favor of House Bill 450, which urges higher education institutions to provide veteran resource centers. However, we do not believe the burden of that bill should be placed on the universities. Uh, and with that, uh, we do thank you for the opportunity to speak before you today. We ask that the board consider uh, uh, bringing up this, uh, the motion to waive these fees at the February meeting if possible and, uh, and offer student opinion. Um, we have several concerns as outlined in our report that we would like to discuss, but thank you. Thank you so much for your report and thank you all for your input. It's valuable and we really appreciate it and take it to heart. I want you to know that. Um, the next order of business is a postponed business from yesterday. We have six items from the miscellaneous section. The first item is a walk on item that was not available in time to be included in the board book materials. The motion is on the uh, screen and hard copies have been passed out to the regents. I. Um, the first item is a resolution honoring Texas State University System Associate General Counsel Diane Corley. Unfortunately, Ms. Corley could not join us today, but I'd like to read the, uh, the motion. Um, I move that the following resolution be adopted honoring Ms. Diane Corley in recognition of her 12 years of distinguished service to the Texas State University System. Is there a second? Second. Second, uh, Regent Williams. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all very much. Um, second miscellaneous item is a resolution honoring Patrick Tibbetts, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Air Force, retired. Um, this is a resolution honoring the former executive director of the State University System Foundation. Um, I will read the, uh, the motion. I move that the following resolution be adopted in recognition of Patrick Tibbetts, Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Air Force, retired. Is there a second? Second. Second, uh, Regent Amato, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Mr. Tibbetts couldn't be here today either. The next item is a resolution conferring the Regent Scholar Award to Dr. Bethany Bradshaw. Um, we're gonna, we have a few resolutions to read. We're gonna ask everybody to stay seated. We're gonna go through the resolutions first and then ask everybody to come up. I believe Regent Edwards will read the motion. Yes, I will read the motion. Um, upon motion by, did we already vote on this? <clears throat> Just read the resolution. How are you making a motion? Okay, uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, conferring the Regent Scholar Award upon Texas State University student Bethany Bradshaw. Do I have a second? No, second. You re read the whole. We want you to read the resolution. Okay. Upon motion by Regent, this part of it. Yeah, just keep going. Okay. Just keep upon going. motion by Regent and seconded by Regent, upon the recommendation of the Chancellor and nomination by the University President that Regent Scholar Award be conferred in perpetuity upon Texas State University student Bethany Bradshaw. The Regent Scholar Medallion be presented to her along with a scholarship of $2,500. That she have the right to wear such medallion at graduation and other appropriate events, and that she be recognized at graduation as having received the award, and the attached resolution be adopted, presented to her, and, forward, and forever recorded and preserved in the minutes of the Board of Regents. So, the Board of Regents, Texas State University System Resolution designating Bethany Bradshaw as Regent Scholar. Whereas Bethany Bradshaw has excelled at the highest academic levels at Texas State University by achieving a perfect 4.0 cumulative grade point average in family and child development, earning Dean's List accolades every semester and receiving several prestigious academic awards and scholarships, including the Terry Foundation Scholarship, Terry Scholar, of the Month Award for September 2014, Outstanding Family and Child Development Student Award for the Spring 2016 semester, and selection to the highly competitive Texas State University Honors College. And whereas Bethany Bradshaw has exhibited commendable campus involvement and leadership in co-curricular activities, having served on the Terry Scholar Service Committee 
as historian and social chair at the Terry Scholars of Texas State, as a freshman mentor for the Terry Scholar Mentor Mentee Program, and as treasurer and vice president at the Family and Child Foundation Association. And whereas Bethany Bradshaw has demonstrated outstanding campus and community volunteerism, including service as a teacher for various child academic programs at First Baptist Academy, as an achievement programs, uh, as an achievement via individual determination tutor for students at Owen Goodnight Middle, Middle School, as a volunteer at Doris Miller Middle School's College Knowledge Family Night, and as two-time participant in Texas State University's annual Bobcat Build Community Service Project, and as a volunteer for the Gears of Giving Back fundraiser, which benefited a medical mission to Costa Rica serving refugee mothers and children with no access to health care. And whereas Bethany Bradshaw has earned the respect of her fellow students, professors, and the Dean and Senior Administration at Texas State University, exhibiting intelligence and exceptional work ethic, enthusiasm for learning, caring for others, and commitment to service. Now, therefore, be it resolved on this 18th day of November 2016, that Bethany Bradshaw be hereby designated and forever hold the title of Regent Scholar for her exceptional academic achievements and her dedication to the service of others. Is there a second? Second. Second, second Regent Williams. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. I'd like to ask uh, Bethany and her family if they would come forward, please. We can recognize you, Mike. I think we'll wait for photo. Wait for the end of the presentation to take photos with the board members. So Bethany is receiving her her plaque, her Regent Scholar medallion, and her scholarship. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Next order of business, um, conferring of Regents Professor Award to Dr. James Beckley. I believe Regent Scott will read the motion, the resolution. Mr. Chairman, uh, the Regents Professor Award, I, I make the motion that the Regents Professor Award be conferred in perpetuity upon James B. Bexley, PhD. The Regents Professor Medallion be presented to him that he have the right to wear such medallion at appropriate events, along with a check for $5,000 that he be recognized as having received this award and that the attached resolution be adopted, presented to him, and forever recorded and preserved in the minutes of the Board of Regents. The resolution reads as follows. Board of Regents, Texas State University System, res resolution designating James B. Bexley as, as Regents Professor, whereas the Board of Regents of the Texas State University System has determined that it would advance the cause of higher education in the state of Texas, and contribute to the public good of the state to create the office of Regents Professor and, whereas the purpose of the office is to recognize exceptional and outstanding members of the professorate who have achieved excellence in teaching, research, publication, and community service, demonstrating in, perf demonstrating in performance of their duties an unwavering dedication to their students, universities, and communities, and whereas the Office of Regents Professor is a lifetime designation bestowed by the Board of Regents upon tenured faculty members who have been acknowledged by their peers and students as exceptional and recommended by the Texas State University System Foundation Board of Directors, the Chancellor and the University President, and whereas James B. Bexley, PhD, Distinguished Professor of Finance, has achieved such excellence by his work through the undergraduate and graduate programs at Sam Houston State University, who has an award-winning author, who has as an award-winning author of over 100 publications on banking and finance, has served for 19 years as the Smith Hudson Endowed Chair of Banking, and having pioneered the curriculum for the university's Bachelor of Business Administration in Banking and Financial Institutions and Executive Master of Business Administration degree programs, 
has earned the highest distinction for himself in the College of Business Administration. And whereas Dr. Bexley, following a successful decades-long career in the private sector, has displayed extraordinary compassion for students by raising over $350,000 for scholarships and facilities, by developing an external student career mentoring program by founding and sharing the College of Business Administration's Executive in Residence program, by leading the Banking and Finance inter Intern program, which has placed over 1,100 students in paid internships from inception to date, and by supervising and mentoring multiple students in independent studies each, sem each semester, and whereas Dr. Bexley, having served six years on the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank Board of Directors, created and served as faculty advisor for the Banking and Finance Club, and served as a virtual research fellow for the United States, for the United States, for the U.S. State Department, and having earned the College of Business Administration's Excellence Award, the Sam Houston State Outstanding Service Award, the Sam Houston State Alumni Association Service Award, the Larry R. Watts Distinguished Service Award, and the Texas Bankers Association First Ever Lifetime Achievement Award has demonstrated an unmatched commitment of service to his profession and Sam Houston State University. And whereas Dr. Bexley, by his qualities of service and character, has brought great honor to Sam Houston State University, the Texas State University system, and the great state of Texas, now therefore be it resolved on the 18th day of November 2016 that James B. Bexley, PhD, be designated a Regents Professor and forever hold said title, including all honors, rights, and privilege appurtenant thereto. Is there a second? Second. Second. We've got a se second, uh, Regent Salazar. Is any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Dr. Bexley, would you please come forward? You and any family members you might have with you? Mike? Thank you, Chairman. On behalf of the Board of Regents and the Texas State University System Foundation, I present you with the resolution and your check in the desk. Thank you very much. Thank you. you bet. Please. I'd like to make a comment about Dr. Bexley. I'm in the financial service business and my firm, we insure probably a thousand plus banks around the United States. And because of this man's great work, Sam Houston State's known all over the country. <coughs> Everybody's trying to hire his graduates. And I mean, he's a legend in the financial service industry. And I basically have to give him credit for me being on the board of the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, the San Antonio branch. He probably lobbied for me when I was being recruited by the Federal Reserve Bank. So I just personally want to thank you. You've done a great job. Thank you. Uh, next order of business, conferring of Regents Professor Award to Dr. Dennis Dunn. I believe uh, Regent Williams will read the motion okay. and the resolution. I move the Regents Professor Award be conferred in perpetuity upon Dennis J. Dunn, PhD, the Regents Professor Medallion be presented to him, and that he have the right to wear such medallion at appropriate events, along with the check for $5,000, that he be recognized as having received this award, and the attached resolution be adopted presented to him and forever recorded and preserved in the minutes of the, this board's Board of Regents. The resolution reads as follows. Whereas the Board of Regents of the Texas State University System has determined that it would advance the cause of higher education in the state of Texas and contribute to the public good of the state to create the Office of Regents Professor and 
whereas the purpose of the office is recognize exceptional and outstanding members of the professorate who have achieved excellence in teaching, research, publication, and community service, demonstrating performance of their duties and unwavering dedication to their students, universities, and communities, and whereas the Office of Regents Professor is a lifetime designation bestowed by the Board of Regents upon tenured faculty members who have been acknowledged by their peers and students as exceptional and recommended by the Texas State University System Foundation Board of Directors, the Chancellor, the University President, and whereas Dennis <coughs> J. Dunn, PhD, internationally recognized historian and preeminent authority on the Catholic Church in Russia, has achieved such excellence by his work through the undergraduate and graduate programs at Texas State University by finding and serving as the director of the Center for International Studies by producing hundreds of publications, including six highly acclaimed books, one of which was nominated for the prestigious Dillon Award for Best Book on American Diplomacy, and by winning numerous scholarly awards, including the Ford Foundation Fellowship and two Keeneman Institute fellowships, thus earning the high distinction for himself and the College of Liberal Arts, and whereas Dr. Dunn has displayed extraordinary dedication in the classroom, earning multiple teaching awards, including the Alpha Chi National College Honor Society Favorite Professor Award and the Everett Sweeney Faculty Senate Excellence in Teaching Award, repeatedly receiving the superlative, rank, the superlative ranking on student evaluation semester after semester from 1974 to present and inspiring hundreds with his integration of research and instruction, leading dozens of graduate students to author successful master theses, culminating in two earning best in history and best in international studies award and whereas Dr. Dunn having volunteered for work on diverse committees over a 46 year career at the department college and university levels including president's international task force financial aid and scholarship committee and faculty state piper nomination committee having organized and advised five student organizations and having served as president of Southwestern Association of Slavic Studies on editorial boards of the World Congress of Slavic Studies and demonstrated an unmatched commitment of service to his profession and to Texas State University and whereas Dr. Dunn, by his qualities of service and character, has brought great honor to Texas State University, the Texas State University system, and the great state of Texas, now therefore be it resolved on this 18th day of November 2016, that Dennis J. Dunn, PhD, be designated a Regents Professor and forever hold title including all honors, rights, and privileges <coughs> of perpetuant, therefore. Two. Is there a second? Second. Second, second Regent Montaigne. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations. <laughs> I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Dunn to step forward, please, and any family members with you? Mike Winnemute. <laughs> Dr. Dunn, Regents Professor, congratulations. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Texas State University System Board of Regents and the Foundation, we present you with this framed resolution.
moving forward. <clears throat> uh, conferring of Regents Professor Award to Dr. Dit Mahan. I believe uh, Regent Reeser will read the motion and the resolution, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that the Regents Professor Award be conferred in perpetuity upon Ditmar Han, PhD. The Regents Professor Medallion be presented to him that he have the right to wear such medallion at appropriate events along with a check for $5,000 and that he be recognized as having received this award and the attached resolution be adopted, presented to him and forever recorded and preserved in the minutes of this Board of Regents. I will now read the resolution. Whereas the Board of Regents of the Texas State University System has determined that it would advance the cause of higher education in the state of Texas and contribute to the public good of the state to create the Office of Regents Professor and whereas the purpose of the office is to recognize exceptional and outstanding members of the professorate who have achieved excellence in teaching, research, publication, and community service, demonstrating in performance of their duties and unwavering dedication to their students, universities, and communities. And whereas the Office of Regents Professor is a lifetime designation bestowed by the Board of Regents upon tenured faculty members who have been acknowledged by their peers and students as exceptional and recommended by the Texas State University System Foundation Board of Directors, the Chancellor, and the University President. And whereas Ditmar Han, PhD, Professor and Chair of the Department of Biology has achieved such excellence by his work through the undergraduate and graduate programs at Texas State University, by publishing over 100 peer-reviewed articles, including 47 since joining Texas State University, by serving on the editorial boards of three major international journals in microbial ecology and environmental microbiology, and by garnering 33 research grants totaling over $5.7 million in funding. And whereas Dr. Hahn, an internationally recognized biologist, has enhanced the effectiveness of Texas State University's biology programs by seamlessly combining basic sciences with teaching excellence into courses that promote deep student understanding of complex interdisciplinary subject matter by mentoring 40 graduate students, including supervising five doctoral dissertations and eight master's thesis since joining Texas State University, and by developing and directing the department's doctoral program in aquatic resources, a unique field that integrates policy and management with the underlying science. And whereas Dr. Hahn, having served on the Texas State University Institutional Biosafety Committee joint admission medical program and several talent search committees, as well as on the liberal arts review group, the engineering and science building steering committee, and as a grievance committee hearing officer, and by his involvement <clears throat> in an external, as an external reviewer in exchange programs with, with five separate Pakistani schools, including the prestigious Quaid I Azam, University and Comsats Institute of Information Technology has demonstrated selfless dedication to the local, national, and international service. And whereas Dr. Hahn, by his qualities of service and character, has brought great honor to Texas State University, to the Texas State University system and the great state of Texas. Now, therefore, be it resolved on this 18th day of November 2016 that Dr. Ditmar Hahn, PhD, be designated a Regents Professor and forever hold said title, including all honors, rights, and privileges apparent thereto. Is there a second? Second. Second, Regent Amato. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Hahn, would you come forward? Any family members you may have to join you, please? Dr. Hahn, Regents Professor, on behalf of the Texas State University System Foundation and Board of Regents, we present you with 
the Regents Professor of Wharton. Andrew Kesha Wharton Medina. Thank you. Should we, uh, Michael, do you want to take pictures here? So we we'll ask everybody to step forward. Should we ask all the uh, the uh, honorees to step forward, please? And you're in charge, Mike. Sure. Regents, please step forward. <laughs> I'm up? Okay, yes, sir. Great stuff. Yeah. Um, next order of business, campus update. Uh, Sam Houston State University campus update. Um, uh, 
Chairman Garza, I have a interim provost, um, Dick Egglesser, I'll present to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Regents, thank you again for the opportunity to talk about some of the things that are happening here at Sam Houston. <clears throat> As with our sister institution, Sam Houston continues to show steady growth, with enrollments up approximately 2% this year. Our student credit hours are up about 3%. Of that, about 20% of our student credit hours are now online. Sam Houston continues to work with our community colleges to help them with the ease of transfer. For example, with, we do a lot of articulation agreements. We have articulation agreements with over 40 community colleges. This allows students at a community college to decide what they take there with, for transfer exactly into Sam Houston without any loss of credit. We also try to facilitate degrees by having reverse transfer, whereby if they leave the community college before achieving their associate's degree, they can take classes at Sam Houston and transfer back to their previous school and get the associate's degree. This fall, for example, we sent 1,178 transcripts for reverse transfer to over 40 colleges. We remain committed to community engagement Community engagement where people teach classes but relate the content to actual problems in the real world. This past fall, we had 316 community engaged classes taught by 207 different instructors. Discover Life, this is the largest biodiversity information source in the world, is now headquartered here at Sam Houston. This program is financially supported by a private foundation. It will make Sam Houston the center of its operation. It currently houses data on nearly 1.3 million species. Our faculty continue to excel. Sam Houston top 40 programs nationwide that offer PhDs in criminology and criminal justice in the latest survey of article productivity published by the journal Criminal Justice Education. Dr. Roland Miller, professor of psychology, was selected as the Minnie Stevens Piper professor becoming the 14th Sam Houston State professor to receive such an award. Dr. Courtney Bunks, a newly hired assistant professor of psychology, has received the National Association of School of Psychology's Henkin Award, which recognizes excellence in applied research or program design by a school of psychologist who has recently entered the field. Dr. Brian Jordan, the author of Marching Home, Union Veterans, and their unending civil war, which is a narrative story about the men who won the war but couldn't bear the peace, was a finalist for the 2016 Pulitzer Prize in history. Following the example of our faculty, our students continue to excel. Alicia Jurek and Rachel Falkert received awards from the Midwest Criminal Justice Association for outstanding student papers. Cassandra Bailey, a clinical psychology doctoral student received the prestigious David Peelan Award Scholarship for training in professional psychology from the American Psychological Association. Undergraduates Kayla Brown and Timothy Wimberley have been working since summer with Dr. Heather Evans, an associate professor of political science, on a research project related to Twitter use in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. They have been publishing their results regularly on the American Politics and Policy blog hosted by the U.S. Center at the London School of Economics. At this time, we'd like to leave you with a glimpse of some of the things that Sam Houston State is doing to bring the experience of discovery through research and professional experiences to students. In many ways, Sam Houston is providing unique opportunities for students who choose our university, opportunities that we hope will characterize the Sam Houston experience. I'd like to share a few examples of some innovative programs that we've designed to help students cross the vital bridge that transports future graduates from the classroom settings to the exciting realm of professional experience. So please sit back and see what Sam Houston University is doing to make education and research come alive for our students in ways that are both engaging their academic interests and jumpstarting their careers. Let's start with the Center for Enhancing Undergraduate Research Experiences or Eureka, which promotes undergraduate scholarly endeavors with expert faculty mentoring. <clears throat> you are here to discover. Inherent experience. Prone to wonder, explore, and create. Driven by moments. Solution. 
Who would know this? We see. Late at night in the laboratory, early in the studio. When you ask us questions or show us something you found. Driven by sharing that we come in, we are here to listen, encourage, and celebrate you. The Eureka Center cultivates and supports mentored research and creative activities. <laughs> because we know enhancing your college experience will enrich your future. Your moment is waiting. What will you discover? I think that a lot of the undergraduate students hear the word research and they just automatically say, well, you know, I'm an art major, so that's certainly not for me. Undergraduate research and creative activities are happening all over campus. And it's not just since the Eureka Center's inception that we've all of a sudden started engaging undergraduate students in these kinds of activities. I think one of the main missions of the Eureka Center is to try to promote actual undergraduate student ownership of those projects. And I think that that's just so powerful that students go from being passive consumers of information to producing the knowledge that's going to show up in those textbooks. Uh, I got asked to be involved in a research project when I was a freshman in college, and that experience is directly responsible for me becoming a college professor rather than going to medical school. I'm in my 18th year as a biology professor here, and I've always had undergraduate students working with me in the laboratory and on field projects. And when I was approached about three years ago to lead up a campus-wide initiative on undergraduate research, I just really jumped at that chance because so much of who I am today is a direct result of being engaged in one-on-one -on -one faculty mentored activities when I was an undergraduate. While Eureka is geared toward early undergraduate scholastic endeavors and faculty mentored projects, SHSU also hosts the Center for Innovation and Technology which takes the next step in including students in a mission of helping customers and external partners in an engaging mix of cutting-edge research projects. We wanted to expose our students to some real-life situations, and, and we had an opportunity come about where we could develop a Center for Innovation and Technology, and that is where we are today. At the Center for Innovation and Technology, we have platform technologies, and there are technologies that are going to revolutionize the way we do business. There are students from computer science, from the College of Health Sciences, and from dance. So we really do cut across all of the colleges on campus and try to pull people in to work on projects that have potential uh, to do some different things out there. Platform technologies. They're extremely important to our world today, and so we need to really stay focused on those and try to make sure that we're always cutting edge here at the center. We work with the Center for the Intrepid over in San Antonio and the opportunities there to do things that fit in with our school motto is just phenomenal. The school motto is a measure of a life as its service, and we have produced items that fit into the gaps where prosthetics don't always uh, function as, as people want them to. There's an opportunity to give somebody back a piece of their dignity. We produced a deodorant holder for a young woman that lost all four limbs. We hold a patent on that device. Uh, one of the things that I love about this university is it's always about the students first. And as a result of having that attitude, I was able to put our students on the patent. So we have two students that worked on that patent that now have their names on it. And as a result of that, it can go on their resumes. And it gives them an opportunity to really shine. Students that engage with us have a unique opportunity to learn about project management and the skill set that comes along with that, the tools and techniques. Uh, they also learn about the technologies themselves and the skills and the techniques that are used with that technology. 
In addition to that, students learn and, and get to engage in a set of problem solving tools and put it into real practice so they can see how it works. When a student can sit down and apply that knowledge and work with the technology that you're talking to them about, you get something phenomenal out of that. To allow our students to explore and to figure out what they're really good at, uh, that's how we're going to move our students ahead in the workplace. So this center really offers that opportunity to our students. And finally, the Sports Broadcasting Education Program is giving students in the Department of Mass Communications a vital, real-world setting for applied learning in the area of broadcast production. The emergence of streaming media has really changed how we do things in broadcast a lot over the last few years. Uh, what was once very expensive to do with satellite trucks or expensive syndication contracts is now a reality due to internet-based broadcasting. Here at SAM, it's also an opportunity to get our students involved and offer them real-world skills before graduation. We worked with the College of Fine Arts and Mass Communication, our own athletics department, and SHSU Online to start to build a, a system and a curriculum to try to give students opportunities that we don't feel they get at every university. In the summer of 2014, we completely gutted our, our current broadcast vehicle and put in a brand new HD streaming system. Uh, this enabled us to give students positions that they would have in a, in a real world situation. Some of the positions range from um, up to eight camera operators, uh, technical directors, directors, audio operators, character generator operators, and instant replay operators. Shortly after the completion of the broadcast vehicle in late summer 2014, the College of Fine Arts and Mass Communication introduced MCOM 4022 Sports Broadcasting into the curriculum and began to train and educate students on new broadcast mediums in an effort to move towards a fully student-operated broadcast. Beginning in fall 2014, the class started meeting regularly and started getting training on broadcast, and over that next year, fall and spring semester, produced over 50 live broadcasts. The next summer, the summer of 2015, Athletics began talks with ESPN to see if we could form a partnership for a fully student-run broadcast that could go to ESPN3. ESPN looked at the 50 broadcasts we had produced in 2014 and determined that we had all the, the skills and technology to be able to send a stream out to ESPN3. Um, starting in fall of 2015, ESPN sent us their music, their graphics, everything that's included when you watch an ESPN3 broadcast they've given to us. So this last semester, we've incorporated all the ESPN elements to start training students on real-world media application used by ESPN. The service support broadcast class is provided to the university and the community as a whole has been met with great support. We've got calls and tweets from parents and student athletes thanking us that they can watch their daughter's soccer game on Tuesday night when they're 100 miles away. This program is really helping bridge the gap for students between academic learning and hands-on experience. Hopefully this presentation will give you a sense, enlightening, of some of the things we're doing here at Sam Houston State. Uh, for your information, Dr. Cook is in the back here who runs our Eureka program, and the van for ESPN is outside if you care to take a look at it. You know, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Eglesauer. Wow, so, so impressive. Just exciting. Um, next order of business is the Texas State University System Foundation update. Uh, first of all, we'd like to welcome the new executive director for the foundation, Mike Wintemute. Mike. Um, thank you. Thank you. Just a brief update, uh, your quarterly update on the foundation.
starting with the Grow Your Own program, we have six active scholarships in play right now. You can see they're in varying states of progress. This chart shows the status of each recipient and the funds that they've accessed so far in green and the funds remaining for each recipient in blue. As you can see, we have some that have made significant progress toward the completion of their degrees and others that are somewhat in the early stages. The current balance for the Grow Your Own Scholarship Program is uh, $268,000 roughly. About 56% of the Grow Your Own Program's current balance, or about $151,000, is committed to current recipients. The remaining 44%, about $116,000, remains uncommitted and is available for future recipients and future scholarships. Snapshot of the Foundation's assets at the end of September, the third quarter. A little more than half of our assets, about 54%, is invested in fixed income investments, treasury notes, and so forth. About a quarter of our assets are uh, invested in domestic stocks, and we have about $355,000, you'll see near the bottom, sitting in a text pool account, which as I understand is a contingency for possible FEMA-related costs. I've been told, I believe we're off the hook for that uh, early next year, and so those funds will be available for other uses. Our undesignated account uh, is shown here. Uh, which represents about 90% of the foundation's assets. Over the past year, we've outperformed the benchmark. And since in inception, we have just about met the benchmark of uh, expected return at 4.9%. Exciting next few months coming up, leading up to our biennial gala. Uh, this year, we will be honoring uh, none other than Governor Greg Abbott Three months from now, we will be walking into this room, hopefully completing a successful gala and all happy with the uh, results. Our goal of uh, $250,000 for this year, we're about 46% there. We're going to have to work extra hard to get there as we're competing with uh, another major event that night in Austin, but I think we can, we can do it with some hard work and effort. That concludes the foundation update. Are there any questions of anyone? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And thanks uh, to all the foundation for your great work. Um, the next order of business is the approval of the consent agenda. These items are found at the end of each section. Are there any items members want to remove from the consent agenda? If not, uh, I move to adopt all items on the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second, Regent Scott. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. So having approved the minutes and the consent agenda, the remaining item under general motions is an informational item outlining the dates and locations for future board meetings. Uh, should be up on your screen. Next meeting's in February um, in Austin. Now, we will hold the elections for chair and vice chair of the board. And I just, I just want to take a moment to thank the fabulous board that I've had the pleasure of working with for the last six years for giving me the privilege and the honor to serve as your chair for the last two years. It just absolutely has been the most incredible journey and the best thing that I've ever done. I've just, it's been a pleasure and an honor. I also want to thank the uh, Texas State University System Foundation staff for their invaluable help. It started with Kelly Wintermute and now the great Carol Treadway, who I've stolen from uh, Brian a few times. She's just incredible. It's a great staff. And of course, Chancellor, I've gotten to know you so well, and it was a pleasure and an absolute honor to have worked with a man like you. This system is in great hands with this Chancellor and with, of course, our great presidents. So I thank you again for the privilege. So, moving forward, do we have a nomination for the office of chair? Ma uh, uh, Chairman, I'd like to make a nomination, please. Regent Williams. It is my pleasure and my honor to nominate uh, Rosanna Salazar to be our next chairman for the uh, Board of Regents. Rosanna has served 
as with distinguished and a wonderful vice chairman, and I think she'd be an outstanding chairperson. So I'm nominating Rosanna Salazar. I'd like to second. We have a second, <laughs> Regent Amato. Uh, do we have any other nomination for this office? Anyone? If there are no other nominees, then the nominations are closed. Does uh, Regent Salazar, do you have any comment or statement to make on your nomination? Only that it would be an honor and a privilege to serve as chairman and to follow in your footsteps, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, as, as Dr. Hoyt knows, I spent some time on campus yesterday with some first generation students. Um, I think it was a group about 50 or 60 students. Um, I know firsthand what education will do to transform their lives. Um, and so it's an honor and a privilege for me to serve as your chairman, if you so choose, um, to help the system and, and, and share the system statewide. So thank you very much for, you, for this Regent honor. Salazar. So all in favor of Regent Salazar, please raise your hands. It's a unanimous vote. Congratulations, thank you. chair. Thank you. Thank you. Systems in great hands. Uh, do we have a nomination now for the office of vice chair? Mr. Chair. Regent Montaigne. I'd like to place in a nomination, it's my pleasure and honor to, Regent Bill Scott. Do we have a second? Second, Matt Nelson. Second. Regent Amato, beat us to the punch. Do we have any other nomination for this office? Anyone? If there are no other nominees, the nominations are closed. Regent Scott, any comments? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, one thing I want to, you talked about how much you enjoyed. This isn't about me. This is about you. you how much you uh, appreciate being on the board with us. We all want to tell you how much we think of you and what a great job you did for the system. Yeah. Here, here. Uh, a lot of you. A lot of you don't know how much uh, work the, the chairman does, and Jaime uh, fulfilled all of his obligations and then some, and, and uh, really appreciate it. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I look forward to serving the system. Uh, I've learned a lot about all the schools here. Many, some of you may know I'm a, uh, you know, a first-generation uh, college graduate myself from Lamar, and I appreciate the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Scott. So all in favor of Regent Scott, please raise your hands. It's a unanimous vote. Congratulations, Vice Chair Regent Scott. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I want to thank Dr. Garza for his tremendous leadership these past two years. And on behalf of your colleagues, Mr. Chairman, and the system office, uh, the board is giving you a gift of some custom-made cowboy boots from Littleton is in San Antonio, Texas. Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> as long as I can have Texas State System logo on them, I'd be really pleased. Did you? Good. Well, that's what I would thank you so very much, and thank you all for your generosity. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chancellor. At this time, we will now accept public comments. Is there anyone present who would like to make a public comment? These comments will be limited to five minutes. Good, okay. Our next quarterly meeting will be February 16th and 17th, 2017 in Austin, Texas. This concludes the meeting of the Board of Regents for the Texas State University System. If there is no objection, we will now adjourn the meeting. The time is 11, 12 a.m., a record. Good meeting. Thank you all very much. Good